the law, the constitution itself says that um, everyone in the Philippines, which includes foreigners, are entitled not only to equal protection of the law, but are entitled to equal protection of the law, no? which means that um, persons, both natural and juridical, similarly situated, must be treated alike. There are several tests employed to determine whether or not the equal protection clause is violated. No? The first one is reasonable basis. And one of the elements of um, um, under the reasonable basis test is that the distinction to be valid must be based on genuine distinction. It must apply um, at all times, and it must be germane to the purpose of the law. Now, I do not know why there is a need to discriminate against state enterprises from China, when in the first place, this is not germane to the law. The law is about liberalizing the Public Service Act because it is an antiquated law. And the law, in fact, recognizes no, that if we are to achieve better public service to the people, we need to allow more players into the sector. So it is not, in fact, germane to the purpose of the law. It is contrary to the purpose of the law in allowing, in liberalizing the entry of as many players into the public service sector because ultimately, it is the consumers that will benefit when there is competition in the public service sector. Now, the, um, the, the reasonable basis test is actually the lowest threshold of all the tests employed to determine whether or not a distinction or a singling out in the law is valid. It is therefore the lowest threshold. But under um, US jurisprudence, and mind you, we adopted the reasonable basis test from US jurisprudence, there are more stricter or stricter requirements in order to sustain the validity of a distinction made by the law. In fact, under the reasonable basis test, um, all statutes which have singled out individuals, provided um, um, we employ the um, uh, reasonable basis test, is presumed constitutional. And it is for the person challenging the constitutionality of the distinction to show which element is lacking. Now, I think under reasonable basis law test, I have already pointed out, it is not germane to the law and there is no um, uh, basis for distinction. Why? Because in the first place, we have already allowed Chinese enterprises to enter the public service. So there is no longer a genuine distinction between existing uh, participants already, which are Chinese-owned um, state enterprises, and future. So it's very clear that two of the crucial uh, elements in order that a statute be declared as constitutional applying the reasonable basis test are already lacking. And therefore, the law is prone to a constitutional cha challenge. But you see, the basis also for distinction here is patently because of nationality. And although it is not mentioned that it is Chinese businesses or Chinese-owned um, um, businesses that are targeted, only Chinese enterprises have state-owned um, enterprises anyway, active in the uh, public sector industry, public service industry. And therefore, we can reasonably infer that it is directed against Chinese-owned state enterprises. Now, under American law, Again, I stress that the reasonable basis test is something that we also borrowed under American law. This is now subject to more intense scrutiny. The very first distinction between the reasonable basis test and the nationality test is that all distinctions based on nationality is presumed unconstitutional. It is now for the state to invoke an overriding state interest to sustain a distinction on the basis of nationality. Now, even without mention of China, foreign state enterprises clearly is a distinction based on nationality, Filipino as against non-Filipino. Now, you know, the, the, even the bigger problem here is we also have Filipino state-owned enterprises. PNOC is one of them, right? Um, ano pa ba? Um, well, NGC, well, NGCP is now private, but um, um, ano pa ba ang mga private dyan? 
FB, well, no, private na rin yan, no? But um, PNOC, engaged in uh, public service uh, industry, is a state-owned enterprise too. So, in order to sustain this distinction, you must show an overriding state interest. And what is that overriding state interest? Is it because of national security? Certainly not, because the Chinese are already in, involved in NGCP. And if we're going to um, argue that um, um, the distribution of electricity is vested with national interest uh, considerations, where is the threat? Um, the uh, Chinese were allowed to enter the NGCP for quite a number of years already, and there is no proven threat to national security. So even if they invoke a threat to national security as the overriding uh, um, interest, then how do you explain the fact that the Chinese are already in NGCP and there has not been any threat to the national interest? Okay, but on the basis of the nationality test or the nationality test, no, I would even say nga, that it is patently unconstitutional. Now, beyond the um, considerations on equal protection, um, on the equal protection clause, there are bigger interests that we should be discussing. The first of which, of course, is that we're amending the law because we want to modernize the economic provisions of our constitution. No? Now, I don't have any strong provisions on this, but I do acknowledge that the constitution is a legal instrument which must be amended no? um, um, pursuant to the changing times. Certainly, the distinction between the 87 constitution and the existing times is that it was enacted prior to the WTO regime. Under the WTO regime, not only is there liberalization in trade, there is also liberalization in investments as well as in, um, in, in investments as well as in uh, services. No? So we, would, we could say, pursuant to the decision of Tanyada versus Sangara, um, where the Supreme Court upheld the constitutionality of the WTO, despite the fact that there is a Filipino first policy in the constitution, that when the country ratified the WTO, uh, calling for liberalization in both um, investment as well as in services, it is because of a greater national interest. And therefore, I would say that any attempt now to modify the constitution, the economic provisions of the constitution must be because of a general um, bigger national interest pursuant to the decision in Angara versus Tanyada. Secondly, um, we are facing a pandemic and we are looking forward to a post-pandemic recovery. And certainly, crucial to this post-pandemic recovery would be job creation, entrepreneurship, and innovation. So why are we now limiting job creation by discriminating against um, state-owned enterprises?